the enemy of all personal sovereignty is what I call satanic illusion. This is the force, the word satan or shaitan in Hebrew means the adversary. He who opposes the oppositional force that tries to create strife and chaos in our life. That's what Satan really is. It's that force. And it's, it does that job by illusion, through illusion and manipulation. It tries to get us to identify with things that aren't true and aren't real. That's what illusion is. Something that isn't true, we latch on to it. And because we latch on to it and refuse to detach from it, and we live according to something that isn't really true. You know, we don't live in harmony with that which is, with the truth. We live, we try to live in disharmony with the truth because we're attached to an illusion that we've bought. All you can get out of that is suffering. You can't get any order out of that. You can only get chaos out of it. So, satanic illusion is that which claims authority and claims the right to even draft laws into being, to write laws, is a satanic illusion that's born in man. Because we're trying to claim that we're an authority, that we in some form represent natural law and represent God. I understand the idea, how, how it's intended, but really all law is satanic illusion if you really come right down to it. Because if a law is in harmony, with natural law, with higher law, with cosmic law. It need not even be codified or written down. If one recognizes natural law as such and lives in harmony with it, there is no need to write that down. It's a redundancy. Conversely, if any law is in opposition with natural law, then it need not... Conversely, if law is not in harmony with natural or cosmic law. It really need not be obeyed. It can be thrown out because one cannot be coerced into living in disharmony with natural law. And that's what all these new punitive laws that are coming in by this rogue administration and others that are to follow it are, are really, really are. They are in disharmony with the natural law of creation. And in effect, they cannot really limit our rights or our freedoms. They can write down those laws all they want. No one is bound to obey or uh, 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 agree to be controlled by them because they don't quite understand about things like the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights do not grant any uh, rights to anyone nor does the Constitution grant rights. These are documents that were written to place limitations upon the enumerated powers of government that are clearly articulated in the early sections of the Constitution. Article 1, Section 8 spells out and enumerates the powers of the government. And these are documents that are supposed to limit the, the, uh, the, the power of these non-sovereign creations of the sovereign beings. But see, we have it the exact other way mentally in our minds. We think that the government is the all-seeing power, all-knowing power, and it grants rights to people. Many people actually think that and actually believe that these documents that were written grant us our rights. It is, nothing could be further from the truth. These documents are supposed to be written limitations on governmental powers and written uh, uh, enumerations of the specific powers that the sovereign beings of the, of the world, of the country, are granting to a, a governmental body to be allowed to carry out. Uh, so the way I look at satanic illusion is that ultimately all law is satanic illusion. All government is satanic illusion because it is externally imposed. It is based in control, which is fear consciousness, and it is based in creating opposition. This is what law, the law of man, this is how the law of man differs from the law of attraction and the law of nature. The law of man is based in opposition. It is an oppositional force. It needs to create two sides 
or a conflict that it can play off against each other so the, a third party can come out on top. So it is the Hegelian dialectic. It is satanic illusion. Bill Clinton made this statement. If the personal freedoms guaranteed by the Constitution inhibit the government's ability to govern the people, we should look to limit those guarantees. He actually made that statement that he thinks that the government has the right to curb people's God-given rights and freedoms. A non-sovereign entity known as the government has a right, in this gentleman's estimation, to curb the inborn birthright freedoms of sovereign beings born into the universe as free beings. He made that statement, and I believe that he believes that. I also know that he believes this statement, and I'll shock you with what I'll follow it up by. He says the purpose of government is to rein in the rights of the people. That's what Bill Clinton actually believes. The, the purpose of government is to rein in the rights of the people. So knowing what I now is, am espousing in this presentation and what I stated throughout, you would think that I disagree with this statement. But the truth is, I don't disagree with this statement. This statement is exactly the truth. The purpose of government is to rein in the rights of the people. And I make that statement because I understand what the word government actually means. This is what the word government means. It comes from two Latin words. Gubernare is a verb which means to control and mente means mind. It is a noun that means mind. Government means to control the mind. Gubernare, where we get the word gubernatorial elections, the election of a governor. Mente, mental, the word mental comes from that root word. The mind, to control the mind. The purpose of government is to control and limit the rights of the people by controlling their minds. Externally imposed government will always do this because it is based upon control. Control is based upon the emotional polarity of fear. You can only create chaos with fear. You can never create order. An externally imposed form of government can never, ever create order or harmony in our lives. It's impossible. It's actually completely impossible because their methodology is based in control, which is in turn based in fear. And fear can only, the dynamic energy of fear can only create chaos as we've seen many times over and that you can prove in your own experience. Control breeds chaos. It does not create order. Government is a modality of consciousness. Externally imposed government is a modality in consciousness that is based in fear. The only kind of government that ever could work to create order is internal government. When we make the decision based on our recognition of natural law principles that are in effect and we recognize them as such and we live in harmony with those laws of creation, then we are controlling our own mind. We are existing in harmony with all three of the aspects of our consciousness, our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. The body and the spirit unify in, in the level of mind, that level is controlled by us from within, not externally imposed. That kind of government could work. And if every being were to come to that level of consciousness, we could reach the natural state that man is intended to live upon this earth in. And it is this state, cooperative spiritual anarchy.